In this part of the video, I'll talk about writing repeating decimals as fractions. Now you might think to yourself, well, that's not something I wanna be doing every day. Uh, and you're right, but uh, it's actually a nice example because it uh, really helps build the connection between decimals and fractions. And it also provides an opportunity to practice your algebra. So let's do a couple of examples to see how this works. So the first example, I want to write this number, 0.777777, the repeating decimal, as a fraction. So the way to do this is to set up an equation n equal to your repeating decimal. Next, we need to multiply n by a multiple of 10 so that we're going to be able to eliminate that repeating decimal part of the number. So this is best done by illustration. So in this case, if we multiply n by 10, we would get 7.77777 and so on. Okay, and now if I subtract n from 10n, I'm gonna be able to get rid of the repeating decimal part. So let's see how that works. So we do 10 n minus n, and on the right hand side we'll have 7.7777 and so on, minus 0.7777 and so on. Okay, and now on the left hand side we've got 9n, because we did 10 n minus n, on the right hand side, we've got a whole number, seven. We got rid of that repeating decimal part. And that's the trick. Because now I can solve that equation, n is seven divided by nine. And that's the answer. We can't simplify that anymore, so n is seven over nine. Okay, let's do a slightly more challenging example. n equals 0.93333 repeating. Okay, let's try the same thing we did in the last example. Let's multiply by 10 and see where that gets us. Okay, so now we have 9.333 repeating. Well, if I did 10 n minus n, that wouldn't get rid of all those repeating threes because I've got this nine here and I don't have a nine down here. Okay, so I'd get rid of all the repeating threes right enough, but I'd be left with a number that isn't a whole number. And that's what I need. I need to get a whole number over on the right hand side. So if we don't get a whole number on the first try, let's try the second step up, which would be to multiply by 100 instead of just by 10. So now I have 100n is 93.333. Okay, and now you should be able to see that if I subtract this 9.333 repeating from 93.333 repeating, I will get a whole number. So I'm subtracting 100n minus 10n to do that. So let's check what we get. We get 100n minus 10n on this side, and on the right-hand side we get 93.33 repeating minus 9.33 repeating. And sure enough, if I calculate that out, I'm gonna have 90n left on the left-hand side, and 84 left on the right-hand side. So now I've got whole numbers, I can do my division to find out what n is, n is 84 over 90. But we're not quite done yet because that's not in simplest form. You should always write fractions in their simplest form where possible. And in this case, we can reduce this to 
n equals 14 divided by 15. So that's how to write repeating decimals as fractions. So two questions to answer. First one relates to either greatest common factor or least common multiple. It's up to you to figure out which of the two concepts applies here. So in this problem, Maya has a bike with a, a larger front wheel than back wheel. The front wheel has a 54 inch circumference and the back wheel has a 36 inch circumference. So Maya puts a chalk mark at the bottom of each tire and then she gets on the bike and rides it. So imagine what happens to those chalk marks as she rides the bike. They're going to go around the wheel and then after she's, she's ridden, let's say 36 inches, the chalk mark on the back wheel will be at the bottom of the tire again. After she's ridden 54 inches, the chalk mark for the front wheel will be at the bottom again. The question is, how far will she have ridden before the chalk marks are at the bottom of each tire at the same time again? Okay, they were at the bottom of the tires at the beginning because she, she drew the chalk marks at the bottom of each tire. Then she started riding her bike and they're gonna coincide at the bottom of each tire again. Okay, what's the first time that they do that? Second problem, it's a little more straightforward to think about, but uh, maybe a little more challenging to solve. Write this number as a fraction. So this is 0 0.9636363. Okay, it's the 63 part that keeps repeating. Write that number as a fraction. 